It's a question that is on the U.S. citizenship test. It's straightforward. There's no trickery, no nuance. And yet Nikki Haley managed to complicate what is uncomplicated. I mean, I think the cause of the Civil War was basically how government was going to run, the freedoms and what people could and couldn't do. I mean, I think it always comes down to the role of government and what the rights of the people are. And we, I will always stand by the fact that I think government was intended to secure the rights and freedoms of the people. It was never meant to be all things to all people. What do you want me to say about slavery? Now, the word you did not hear there in the initial part of the answer is slavery. So this morning, Nikki Haley dusted herself off and she tried again and still did not succeed. Of course, the Civil War was about slavery. We know that. That's, that's the easy part of it. What I was saying was, what does it mean to us today? Our goal is to make sure, no, we never go back to the stain of slavery, but what's the lesson in all of that? Where attempt number two fell flat, so did attempt number three. Of course the Civil War was about slavery. We know that. That's unquestioned, always the case. We know the Civil War was about slavery. But it was also more than that. It was about the freedoms of every individual. It was about the role of government. So when Haley wasn't busy going, yeah, but, she was busy blaming the question, or the questioner in this case. It was definitely a Democrat plant. That's why I said, what does it mean to you? And if you notice, he didn't answer anything. The same reason he didn't tell the reporters what his name was. We see these guys when they come in. We know what they're doing. Now, it made for a pretty low-hanging fruit for her rivals in this race not that difficult uh, to identify uh, and acknowledge uh, the role slavery played in, in the Civil War. I'll make it easy for you. If someone asked me what the cause of the Civil War was, it's easy. <laughs> it's slavery. But for Haley, a two-term governor from South Carolina, this is actually not a new question at all. Journey back to us to 2010, when she got nearly an identical question. I think you had one side of the Civil War that was fighting for tradition, and I think you had another side of the Civil War that was fighting for change. You know, at the end of the day, what I think we need to remember is um, that, you know, everyone is supposed to have their rights. Everyone's supposed to be free. Everyone's supposed to have the same um, freedoms as anyone else. So, you know, I think it was tradition versus change is the way I see it. Tradition versus change on what? On individual rights and liberty of people. Tradition versus change. But again, slavery is the word that is conspicuously absent from that answer when it obviously should not be. 163 years after South Carolina seceded from the Union, there is no debate that slavery sparked that war. There was no debate in 1860, when South Carolina decided to secede, and cited increasing hostility on the part of the non-slaveholding states to the institution of slavery. Now, history here is settled, but H Haley has a history herself of doing most anything that she can to avoid the ugliness of this particular issue. Take her ever-evolving, shape-shifting on the Confederate flag. Now, Haley says that her 2015 decision to take that flag down shows political backbone. We turned away from fear, toward God, and the values that still make our country the freest and greatest in the world. But since 2015, when Haley banished the stars and bars from the South Carolina Capitol grounds, she swayed like a palmetto tree in a stiff breeze on what the flag actually means. We are here in a moment of unity in our state without ill will to say it's time to move the flag from the Capitol grounds. The Confederate flag is coming off the grounds of the South Carolina State House. I think it should be in those places of historical settings, not in places that represent all people. You know, if someone wants to travel to see it, that's one thing, but it shouldn't be in front of someone's face to where they have to feel it. Here, 
is this guy that comes out with his manifesto holding the Confederate flag and had just hijacked everything that people thought of. And we don't have hateful people in South Carolina. There's always the small minority that's always going to be there. But, you know, people saw it as service and sacrifice and heritage. After that horrific tragedy, we didn't turn against each other. We came together, black and white, Democrat and Republican. Together, we made the hard choices needed to heal and removed a divisive symbol. Now and forever, all politics is local, of course. And when the locals want this. They're poisoning the blood of our country. That's what they've done. They poison mental institutions and prisons all over the world. Maybe that explains, at least partly, why Haley hems and haws on something that is so simple and ultimately so clear. Back with us is Chair Michael Singleton and Mark McKinnon. Mark, what's fascinating is that three tries is what it takes, it seems, for her to get to a better place on this issue. I'm not even sure if it was all that much better, to be honest. Uh, what went wrong here? Well... Uh, it, this could have been a John McCain moment and instead it became a Sarah Palin moment. It's very unfortunate timing for Haley, who's got so much momentum and attention right now. And so at, at a maximum time of exposure, she made one of the greatest uh, uh, mistakes of the campaign. And and I, I listen, I, I think that it was, I think she just got in her head and she was thinking about the questioner. And, and by the way, that shouldn't matter who the questioner is. I've seen Donald Trump take you know, hundreds of questions from very unfriendly reporters, and he does it, uh, he does it happily. Uh, so the question, the question and the questioner shouldn't matter. What should have mattered was the answer, and it was, it was obvious one, and I think it just got in her head. And listen, I, she is a woman of color from South Carolina, of immigrant parents who took down the Confederate flag, for which I think, she, which I think was a very difficult thing to do, for which I think she should get some credit. So I don't think, I don't think she's racist. I think she's, I think she tried to play it too cute by half by by trying to avoid taking it head on, which is unfortunate because I think that I, I suspect that uh, given the position she took on the Confederate flag that I mean, as she said, like I said, I think she was in her head and she just didn't say the obvious thing, uh, which is later. I don't think she's afraid to say it. I think she just she booted it. And, and listen, I think her cleanup was I mean, it was clear to me what she was saying. It was about freedom and freedom for slaves. Uh, and and for, for all Americans. So I thought the, I thought the cleanup was fine. But listen, the question, it's a distraction at a very critical time in the campaign for her. I mean, Chair Michael, do Republican voters actually care about this? Clearly, she's given this answer for over a decade now. It's worked for her. I mean, it has. I, I think there's a certain sector of Republican voters uh, that may be very fond of, of her answer. But as an African-American who happens to be a conservative, I, I thought... Her answer was quite despicable and embarrassing. It was a simple uh, answer. As Governor Chris Christie stated, she could have easily have given the answer. She presided over the state uh, during the Charleston massacre where multiple African Americans were literally murdered by a racist individual while in church, of all places. Uh, she, whatever bump Nikki Haley could have received uh, out of the endorsement from Sununa, whatever bump she could have received out of uh, the momentum uh, we have seen over the past several weeks now, I, I think that's all gone. I, I think it's over for her. You have a presidential candidate who is unable uh, to answer very complicated questions because they're attempting to placate to a base who, in my opinion, um, Abby, wouldn't vote for her anyway. So why be so uncomfortable with just telling the truth? It's about slavery. And whatever comparisons one would like to make about traditions or, or limited government is, is odious, in my personal opinion. This is a disqualifying issue to me. If you cannot be factual about history, I question your ability to make sound judgments about the present that will ultimately shape the future. I mean, Mark, if this had happened before South Carolina, as opposed to before New Hampshire, do you think that we would be having a different conversation here about Nikki Haley and the effect that this all has? Well, no, listen, I think if she said this any time during the campaign, it'd be getting just as much of attention as it is right now. I, I, mean, I think it's a very controversial thing that's happened. I think it's very unfortunate the timing was bad, but it would have been bad if we were in South Carolina. Uh, I mean, she'd be getting more attention there, presumably, if she'd done well in New Hampshire. Uh, I, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a very unfortunate thing at a very unfortunate time. 
and as Sir Michael was saying, you know, this this she needed to be perfect right now, and the last night was far from perfect. Was it a fatal mistake, Mark? Listen, I, I, I don't know. We'll see in the next couple of days. I, I, I hold out a hope. Listen, my bottom line is I, I don't want Donald Trump to be reelected. I think the only less, the last best chance in the Republican primary for that to happen, as slim as it is, is Nikki Haley. So uh, in my view, I think that, that there'll be Republicans out there who, who understand that Trump is a threat and will look to, to Haley. And I think that's a new, new endorsement will be very helpful. And, and it, listen, I, I've won and lost in New Hampshire, so I know what it's like, and I think she's got a shot. <laughs> Mark and, Abby, and Sheriff Abby, Michael. Abby, if yeah. I could just say re really quickly, look, my rebuke of Nikki Haley isn't because I dislike her. I'm very fond of her. She's a talented politician. She has the experience, and my hope is that she will indeed do well. Uh, but for a lot of African-American conservatives that I've spoken to who were hoping to continue to see her rise, we're thinking, why do this now? When you know your room for mistakes, your room for error is so small. Why make this mistake over such a sensitive issue? She didn't have to, Abby. Hmm. I mean, sh she didn't, but she's done it before, so maybe that's the answer for, for the why of it all. Uh, Cher Michael, Mark, thank you both very much. Have a great Thanks, weekend. Thanks, Abby.